Hi everyone, welcome to the video. Today I decided to talk about on an issue that might be a help to most of beginners nowadays who are trying to get into sampling. What's the best way to get better at sampling? I was going through that question and I put down some of the answers for that. And these are things that I also use when I'm making beats, so it might help you as well if you're starting, if you're a beginner. <music> I think the first rule is to put in the hours. If you want to get better at anything in life, you need to put in the hours. You need to make at least one beat a day. I would make two, but one is fine. You can make one beat a day and that will make you better at sampling. So that's pretty obvious, but I had to start with that one to make sure that you guys always put in the hours because that's the most important thing. <music> Sample anything, okay? Any genre. Sample kids, kids music. I have no idea what this is. I still haven't gone through this. So I'm gonna sample that. Whatever this is, jazz, jazz, soul. What I'm trying to say is that don't get stuck on one type of sound because sometimes even though I really like sampling jazz, what when I layer samples together, I like to drop other type of stuff on top of my jazz chords. So it's that mix of samples that makes it interesting to me. One of the things I noticed is that a lot of people always cut on the one, that meaning that you always cut at the start of a loop and you're always chopping even bits and I would say just get loose with that, get looser, just chop anywhere, it doesn't matter if you're chopping on a transient or not, it doesn't matter if you're chopping on the one, it really doesn't matter. Don't be as perfect when you're cutting samples. I'm chopping I don't put the cut the start and the end right where the sample starts I always leave a bit of room before because you can always trim it in the MPC I don't know how it is with other machines but on the MPC it's just so easy to then trim the sample I always leave a bit of room because you know I never really know how the sample is going to fit with the drums okay and, and sometimes given that extra room at the beginning really does make a difference for the sample it makes it just it makes it swing together with the beats it just makes it looser another thing that i find useful is to listen to the entire song most of the samples are always at the beginning and the end of the song but you can always find things in the middle so always listen to the entire record. One of the great things I find about sampling is that I get to listen to a ton of music and that in itself, it's schooling. That's teaching you how to produce, that's teaching you how to arrange a song. So always listen to the entire song, even if just to see what that musician did with that song. Always progress into what you did. And if you found a sample that you really like, search for that artist again, search for other songs of that artist search for collaborations of that artist with another artist uh, because if you really enjoyed something from an artist it means there's probably a ton more samples where that came from Sometimes while listening to a record, listening to songs that you want to sample, it might help having a drum loop on the side already so you can test out some ideas. There's a saying old, says, I'm 
sample off of anything. That's my theory. I'm not a purist in the sense that I can only sample from records. I sample from anything. When I started making beats, I had no record shops. I come from a very small place in Portugal. There were no record shops where I could go and dig for jazz. I would sample off of anything, TV, CDs, cassettes, VHS tapes, and eventually records. Plus YouTube is this mecca of sampling nowadays. And if you're skipping YouTube because you're a purist, and I think you're just missing out on a huge, huge sound library. So get on YouTube. That said means that don't sample just from music. Also sample from films, sample from the radios. I don't know, just find find other other sources because that can create some new new material that you can use. Pay attention to the left and the right side of the recording because sometimes some of these old records they will just you know put the drums on the right and put like the the piano on the on the on the left so always when you're sampling just pay attention what's on the left and what's on the right just the other day i was sampling something and i had the horns just on the left side which i took just the whole entire song had horns i chopped it all and now i have just this folder with a bunch of horns that i can use on the MPC, it's super easy to do if you're sampling straight into the MPC. You can just choose input one or two, and that will give you the left and the right channel. So when you're recording your samples, don't be super hectic on just trying to put everything at once in your drum loop. When I listen to some beats that you guys send, I notice like there's some there's a cacophony of samples just trying to trying to mash together just a bunch of hits at the same time. Some of these cuts don't really make sense when they're together. Just take it easy. When you're recording a sequence, you could just record a sample at a time. Just use one hit, two hits. And then jump onto another sequence. Record different ideas, all right? You have several sequences in the MPC. You don't need to put everything down in one sequence. You don't need to have that master sequence. You have several sequences that you can record ideas into. So just put an idea down in one, then move on to another sequence, put another idea down, and just do it like that. Don't sit on an idea for too long. It's, I think it's probably one of the things that uh, sometimes distract us as producers and we're trying to we're trying to create this loop that we think is going to work it's going to work and we sit on the idea for way too long and it just doesn't work it's not clicking we think it's going to click we just need to add this sample or add that sample but sometimes you spend like an hour two hours on something that at the end it's not really working my thing is to always test different ideas with the samples I have. I have a drum loop going, I record several ideas in several sequences, and then I come back and listen to them and see which one actually has a better flavor, and then I build on that one. So test different ideas, record different sequences before you stick to one, before you sit in one of these ideas for far too long, and at the end it doesn't work. Of course, if that helps you, to me, it helps a lot. Start with the drums. Just start by having a drum loop playing and then trying to layer the samples on top of the drums. After that, you can change the drums a little bit to fit the samples. But to me, it helps having that drum loop playing so I can put the samples on top of it. Another thing that I notice is that sometimes people don't have swing in their drums. 
They don't have ghost notes. They don't shift their snares. They don't shift the hi-hats or anything. And you end up having like this static drum loop and then some samples. You can have the best samples, but if your drum loop isn't good, if you're not swinging, if you're not mixed well, then it's just not good. I can have the crappiest sample, but I have a good drum loop, it works, okay? The drum loop is the most important thing. You need to make it swing, you need to mix it well. Apart from the drum swing, another of the great things that make a beat shine is how you mix it, where you put your levels. Sometimes you have a sample that's way too loud for the drums. Lower that sample. It will surprise you how much your beat changes and how much all the other sounds come up front and just it will make your beat shine in a different way. During the whole process of beat making, for me, I'm always changing levels all the time. I'm always changing the sounds of the drums all the time, just to testing out a different snare, test this different kick, test the hi-hat, change the levels. So mixing is so, so, so important. And that was it. Like those, those to me are the are the things that are really important. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Tomorrow I have a new beat tape coming out. Took me ages to put this out. It should have been here at the beginning of the year, but I had a lot of stuff happening. So in any case, tomorrow tune in to Spotify, Apple Music, whatever. I have a beat tape out. You guys can listen to it and enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching the video. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.